Hi folks, this is Rockman Pat with another GeoTalk today and today I want to talk about collecting strange and fun rocks. Now, I don't know if you have any of those in your collection, but I sure do. I've got a lot of them. And uh, in particular, I'm going to be talking about geodes, vugs, what a silly name, nodules, concretions, and thunder eggs. These all look very interesting, don't they? And uh, yes, they're, they are all rocks, but they're very, very particular. Now, one thing I want to point out here is nobody has ever seen these rocks form. So even though you can go on the internet or check out different books that'll tell you the origin of these things, yet it's all based in speculation and ideas. No one really knows how they were formed, real mysteries. And uh, so I'll talk to you a little bit about that and maybe a possible idea for it a little bit later. But let's get into the fun and uh, strange rocks here to collect. So I want to start down here at this end on geodes. The word geode means earth-like. And uh, they're usually, uh, they usually come with hollow centers filled with some kind of crystals either of uh, calcite or um, silica and uh, they can be either uh, sedimentary or volcanic. So these four up here are sedimentary geodes and uh, they all have uh, quartz crystals inside of them. Some of these can be very very colorful. Uh, they're very interesting rocks. They're fun. Kids like to break them open and get the crystals out of them. Uh, it's a real art though to breaking them uh, so that they come apart like this. So you can see a, uh, a, a hollow shell inside with lined with crystals. That's, that's a little tougher to do. And uh, generally I use uh, something like a metal punch and I'll tap at a particular place on the geode uh, just so it won't, uh, I don't use very much force, but I do enough to get a crack in it and then I pry it apart. That's how I do mine. Uh, but geodes can also be volcanic. These geodes are uh, rhyolite lava. So rhyolite lava is a light colored lava. And of course there's a lot of quartz in rhyolite and so it would make sense that the centers of these uh, geodes are filled with crystals. These are a particular kind of geode called a Dugway geode. Uh, technically, they are a hollow uh, volcanic uh, geode and uh, they have a blue outline, very pretty blue outline. Sometimes the crystals also approach a color of blue, but these are also fun to collect. Now, these are tougher to get into. You you can do the sedimentary geodes with a little bit of a chisel, some patience and a hammer, but these are thunder egg geodes and those are going to be a lot tougher. Generally you need a saw to get into those. One I have here, this is sawed but not polished. This one is uh, sawed and polished and they're a real bugger to polish because especially if you're doing it the way I do with sand paper, upright sanding machine, the rough edges on the inside will catch on the wheel and it'll end up pitching that thunder egg right out of your hand. So those are a little tougher to, to polish. Anyway, those are geodes and they're a lot of fun. Now this next one here is called a vug or uh, amygdule basalt. And in the various lavas, sometimes you will find, which is what this is, this is actually basalt lava. Sometimes you're going to find little tiny pockets filled with crystals of what we call zeolites. Uh, zeolites are crystals that contain water in their chemical formula. And uh, some of these can be very, very pretty, but they're common in volcanic rocks. And you can see the various pockets. Now the Vug, these would be miniature Vugs, 
The vugs are generally large uh, crystal lined holes in uh, bigger rocks. So for instance, uh, they're, they're very common in limestone rocks where you have exposed holes in the limestone rock and they're filled with generally calcite crystals. But vugs are very interesting to, to collect. And then nodules. Now nodules are defined as a irregularly rounded knot of rock or mineral that can uh, contain everything from fossils to solid cores and various minerals. So these are thought to be uh, volcanic, although we've never seen them form. They are generally of solid uh, mineral uh, quartz of some kind, quartz and agate and jasper. They're all the same uh, variety of uh, silicon dioxide which is the chemical formula for quartz. This one is a very pretty Brazilian agate. This is what it looks like on the outside. And uh, this is what it looks like on the inside. Very colorful, very pretty. And uh, this is an agate from the Salmon River area in Idaho. And you can see the agate outline plus then the quartz center here. This is a solid uh, agate, so solid silica. This is a Montana moss agate. They call it moss, not because there's moss growing in it, but because there are dendritic patterns, uh, which are tree-like patterns. Some people think they're fossils, but they're not. They're the way uh, manganese can crystallize uh, within, the, uh, within the agate. So you've got... Uh, generally a blue to a blue-gray agate. And the Montana moss agate is known for real pretty dendrites or dendritic patterns. Here are some uncut and uh, unpolished um, nodules. These are kind of strange looking, aren't they? And these are from Idaho. And then I mentioned earlier that the nodule can also come with fossils in them. I have found nodules, clay nodules, out in the uh, Pacific coast of Washington that have crab fossils in them. Now this particular nodule is of shale. It's kind of a muddy shale here, but you'll notice what's inside is a fern. These ferns actually, I believe, tell a real story and it has to do with their origin. Every single fern I have collected the, uh, comes out flat in the fossil. Generally when ferns die, and it's pretty common to notice this in Washington, lots and lots of ferns out here. When a fern dies, it curls, the leaves curl and it turns brown. Well, every fossil I have found has flat ferns in it, which tells me these were probably buried when they were still alive. So that could be a strong indication of the origin. It's a sedimentary rock. So we have uh, fine grained clay, claystone that has preserved uh, ferns in it. Very, very pretty and very, and quite common actually. Those are very common. From the nodules, we move on to what is called a concretion. Now, the word concretion means to grow together. And uh, it's a, a little bit misleading because we don't actually know uh, how they grew together. We don't really know whether they grew together. They could have been easily tumbled in fast moving sand uh, or clay, which is the, some of the uh, constituents here of these things. This particular one, if you turn it over, is kind of ugly itself. This is a combination of clay and limestone. So it's a very fine grained sedimentary rock that then when you cut it open and polish it, you expose the calcite, which is, uh, of course, calcite. And uh, the, the, the elements, uh, calcium carbonate, so that gives you calcite. These come in generally a yellowish color with a brown calcite uh, fortification pattern around them. Again, no one knows how they're formed. They haven't seen them form. 
Um, there are sand. This is a very coarse grain sandstone concretion that obviously shows signs of being rolled in something. And then these are a combination of uh, sand and uh, iron compounds. This one here is a very strong iron compound uh, called siderite. And uh, it's got a lot of iron in it, but these have iron and sand in them come in really weird shapes. These are from Montana found uh, where we find all the dinosaur bones and obviously a lot of uh, turbulent high velocity water has been involved in these. These are fascinating concretions. They're just simply clay. Uh, they're really weird looking, aren't they? But they're clay and uh, I have found a wide variety of these. No two are alike. There are some similarities, uh, but no two are alike, and they're just very, very strange. But very interesting, too. I really enjoy collecting these because there's, again, no two alike, um, and they're, they're fun to collect. Those are called concretions and of a strange rock. And then the uh, last over here are thunder eggs. The technical term, term is lithophysi, meaning blowstone or to blow stones. And that would make sense. These are obviously volcanic, uh, but again, we've never seen these form in modern times. This particular uh, rock here is a volcanic ash with lots of uh, with lots of thunder eggs in it, filled with opal, opal centers. And uh, this one was found in Washington. It's one of the Washington thunder eggs that's common. But the matrix that's holding these uh, is ash. And that makes sense. You normally find thunder eggs in ash or lava beds. And that's what this is. It's just hardened ash with thunder eggs in it. This particular one is actually a double thunder egg. Um, it's got uh, rhyolite lava. And then, of course, when you cut it open, beautiful patterns of quartz, some opal, agate, darker agate here. But this is a double thunder egg. And uh, again, just a mystery as to how they're formed. These are wide variety of thunder eggs here. You can see the agate patterns come in a lot of different um, colors. Uh, generally, some kind of an agate pattern in the middle. This one is a little bit of a geode uh, center with some exposed quartz crystals. And uh, they also come with jasper and opal. These two down here are thunder eggs with opal. Now I have tried polishing opal thunder eggs and they're very difficult primarily because the opal is a very soft mineral. It's actually hydrothermally altered quartz. Quartz by itself is very very hard but once hot water has been applied it can change the chemical structure of a lot of things and uh, that's exactly what it's done here. So a couple of thunder eggs down here with opal, very colorful opal thunder eggs. Uh, the thunder eggs generally indicate an area, a particular area where they can be found. Uh, we know names of some of these like the, the Richardson Ranch area or Pride A in Oregon. Uh, there's the Killer Green. Those are from a particular lava flow this is this particular thunder egg is from Idaho and um, this one here I'm not sure exactly where it's from this one is uh, what we call the uh, Sucker Creek area in Oregon and so every area that's volcanically related has uh, particular identifying marks for the thunder eggs but these are just very very uh, interesting things to collect now I'll give you a little bit of an idea. I think all of these, as to their origin, I think all of these 
have to do with uh, their origin in the flood. And, and uh, I'll tell you why. First of all, the sedimentary run, uh, sedimentary rocks that I showed you here, that's, I think that's pretty obvious. That was a lot of violently moving water. And um, I think they really are characteristic of the flood. Same way with the, sh the nodules of, with the fossils in them. But some of these are volcanic. And um, I personally think that, the, of course, the world before the flood was an entirely different world. Um, all of the minerals, or most of the minerals, were locked up inside the, the creation. We didn't have the violent, turbulent weather uh, before the flood that we had after the flood. And I'm guessing that, according to Genesis 7:11, when the fountains of the great deep burst open, they released all kinds of stuff from underneath. And I think that accounts for the beautiful colors and patterns in the uh, volcanic uh, nodules and thunder eggs and uh, richer crystals in the basalt. So I think the flood had a lot to do with it. Now, again, no one knows for sure because no one's ever seen these form. None of the volcanic eruptions we've seen in recent years or in recorded history for that matter have produced, that, that I am aware of, have produced, uh, they haven't produced the thunder eggs or the volcanic nodules that I've shown you here. And that's one of the reasons I think these are very fun to collect. I think they're a real testimony to the flood. And um, I've got quite a collection of them uh, for that very purpose. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, feel free to get in touch with me if you like. Uh, go on to our website at northwestrockandfossil.com. You can reach me by way of my email there. And um, if you have any other ideas on the origin of these, I'd sure be glad to hear them. Lots of fun and interesting rocks to collect out there. Hope you enjoyed it.